Welcome to problem 12 of the Computer Science 121 2013 Winter 2 Practice Final Exam screencasts. So this is a working computer problem, and if you haven't looked over our working computer, it might not make a lot of sense. But uh, this is actually pretty general, this problem, to any uh, computer with an instruction set where the instructions vary in length. So it says our working computer's instructions can come in various lengths, which is true. Why are some instructions longer than others? Briefly explain, ideally with an example of what might cause an instruction to require more space. There's really two ways of coming at this. One is, why did whoever designed our computer decide to have some instructions be longer than others? Because there are plenty of sets of instructions where all the instructions are the same length. The other side of this is, uh, once you've decided some instructions are longer than others, what, what forces some instructions to be longer? Um, and it kind of sounds like it's talking about the latter one, because we give an example of uh, what might cause an instruction to require more space. So just briefly, why would you choose to have some instructions longer than others? Basically, you only do that if you think that it matters to have your instructions take up as little memory as possible. Because by having the sort of rarer instructions be longer, and the more common instructions be shorter, or generally speaking, by having an instruction take up as little space as it can and still include all the information that's needed for that instruction, your programs take up less space. These days, we don't tend to worry so much about space as we do about performance, right? You've got plenty of room on your computer for your programs. And honestly, your programs are not generally the biggest thing on your computer. It's your data that's the biggest thing. You know, look on your computer and probably most of the space is taken up by video files. Most of the space on my computer right now is probably taken up by these screencasts. So we don't care that much how long our programs are these days, and therefore modern instruction set architectures uh, often choose to have all the instructions be the same length, just because it's easier to work with then. But most modern computers do not use a modern instruction set architecture. They use the Intel instruction set architecture that's been around for 30 years or so at this point. So um, our instruction set architecture uses instructions of various lengths. Now, why would one instruction be longer than another? Well, consider like the halt instruction. All we need to know for that all that the working computer needs to know, not the water closet, is what it is. It just needs to know, I want to stop. Okay, so there's no extra information there. Uh, on the other hand, consider um, a jump instruction, for example. So a jump instruction has to take us to some other address in memory. It tells us the next instruction to use is, is this instruction. Um, so it needs to, it, we need to know what instruction that is, um, but it also needs to include a number uh, that is if you like, it's either the address we're jumping to, or it's how far in our instructions we're jumping, like one instruction forward, one instruction back, or whatever, depending on your instruction set. That's extra data. And that's basically it. Uh, because some instructions require more data than others. So some instructions require more data than others. And that's all there is to it. Okay, now what part of an instruction indicates how much memory the instruction takes up? In our instruction set, actually in almost any instruction set, that is the opcode the operation code, the thing that tells you what type of instruction it is. And in our instruction set, we call that ICD. That's sort of our name for it, the instruction code. But more generally, it's called an opcode.